Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, Julia McNeil Crafts, and today it's time for Dawn and Julia Create. So Dawn has set the challenge, and at first I was like, ooh, um, but then I think that's always the way when you receive the challenge, because whoever's making the challenge has been thinking about it for a while, so kind of doesn't feel quite so scared by it whereas i think quite often what happens is you just need a bit of time to process but anyway because my initial reaction was uh, um dawn added some extra bits so she says we've got to take a cardboard box any size um, and create two tags we've also to use the cardboard box to create our own embellishments the add-ons are the word pack the jmc design steampunk word pack flowers the add-on that she did because I, you know, panicked when I first saw it was um, to use stuff from your bit box. And then she sent me a message a bit later saying you can add ribbon or string. So I can guarantee you now that when I watch it, Donna will be making something going to you know what? I wish I'd put string on the list. I wish I'd put string or ribbon on the list. Shall I be naughty and add it? <laughs> I reckon. I reckon. We'll see if I'm right. But I reckon she will be halfway through her process and realise that she wanted ribbon or string. And she knows that I'm a last minute Annie and that she could just add it on. So it'll be interesting. <laughs> if I'm not, I'm besmirching her name and I'm very sorry for besmirching your name. <laughs> so anyway, this parcel, when I came back from Peterborough last time, Kezia had a little box all wrapped up for us and she bought us some cutlery. <laughs> But it was iridescent cutlery so she was like i was thinking that our cutlery was looking old so now we have lovely iridescent cutlery so she bought us that as a present but i thought this was quite interesting when i first saw it i knew i wanted to keep it because i was half thinking a journal that it could have made quite a funky journal um but now i'm thinking that we've got our two tags right there and then we've got extra interesting bits for um what you call it um the embellishments that dawn has said that we have to make. So I'm just going to cut these two main parts out. I'll maybe just let you pop off for a minute. Yeah, I think I'll just pull this box apart a little bit and cut this. I could have done with better scissors, I think. Yeah, so I'm just going to take the tabs off like so. I'll probably need to even this up once I've got it cut properly, but it's very strange when I cut and you've got like box holding me back. I'm going to move this out of the way as well. That was just so that I remember to tell you. Did she put black pen on there? Oh, I'll have to reread back the messages. Did she make me do this without black pen? And there she is at doing string and ribbon. Shocking state of affairs. Right, I'm <laughs> Oh, I'm in a naughty mood today, aren't I? I'm in a naughty step already. We're only three minutes in. Right, um... <laughs> I'm just going to cut these pieces and I'll be back myself. And I have to apologise for besmirching the good name of my friend. <laughs> she did have black paint on the list, so I'll let her off. <laughs> eh, dear. Now I'm going to expose some of this. Dawn's going to expose some as well. Guarantee that. And she'll say that I'm going to do it. We like to call, we like to guess what each other's going to do. But she'll, she'll say... She'll probably say that I'm going to expose some of the cardboard and I pretty much reckon she will do the same as well. So that's what I am just going to do. Yeah, so I hadn't noticed the colouring mediums is al not alcohol. Oh, I've got two videos on the brain. I'm going to be doing a day of filming today. Because my mum has my daughter. Um, because in Scotland, we're allowed informal babysitting as long as we're working so because filming is the one thing that's a little bit harder to do while she's around uh, that is all I am going for um, I've already been up since the crack of dawn doing paperwork and posting orders and bits and bobs like that so I'm just going to keep exposing some more of the cardboard like this um, on both the tags so I'll just keep doing that because, you know, I'll basically you can see what I'm doing. I'm sort of putting my scissors in the grooves and um, pulling off the excess. But I like to do this because it creates a little bit of interest and texture. And I think that is one of the things I absolutely love working with cardboard is it's a really cheap, cheap thing to do. It's really available to everybody. And you can get great 
interesting effects without needing, um, you know, without needing all the extra products like texture pastes and stencils and all of that. Sort of quite often we end up adding texture using other mediums. But this is such a cool substrate that you can actually just do it as it is now. So it is a little bit faffy though. So I am just going to go off camera and I'll come back when I've exposed texture on both of these tags. Okay, so that's me exposed the texture. I'm thinking, I was half thinking here, yeah, let's see, I might just try and cut it rather than rip it. But I was thinking it almost looks like. You know, like you've pulled it off a notepad, you know, like that, when you pull something out of a notepad, it has that thingy look. So I'm just wondering if I put it there. I might put it over there so we've got a little bit of extra texture, whether that works. I'm going to take away that right straight line, though, she says, if she can manage to rip. Let's give myself a wee clean helping hand there. I'm just, yeah. I don't want it overly straight. But I'm thinking that that looks a little bit like when you tear a piece out of a notepad. So I might do that because I think that could look quite fun. So we'll just tear that down there and then I might just tear the... As she says, it's actually quite difficult to do. <laughs> Such narrow tearing on cardboard. And then I'll try and do the same here, just so it doesn't look quite so precise. <laughs> I don't like straight lines. Okay, so let's do that and then we'll do the same. Should we do the same on both? Or should we use it different? See, I just, I really quite like that. It reminds me of, be crafty people have some MDF. It looks like torn notepad pages. Um, it reminds me of that a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to stick with doing the same on the other side. Now, I'm thinking about just trying to add more interest and layers just because we can. More like that there. Okay. Just, let's just. Uh, don't want to make it um, too overly complicated. This is just the base base layer, and we're just adding bits of interest. Do it kind of sort of seemed a bit different. Mm, decisions, decisions. I'm do a corner piece. want them same but different. Yeah, should we go like that? That's quite good but I've lost some of the exposed bits there so I'm just going to bring that a bit further. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my glue gun and I'm going to use a combination of gel medium and the glue gun. It's just purely that I kind of want to get onto the gessoing stage um, for this. I want to sort of make the most of the, the fact I've got time to sit and do the videos today. Um, that and I've got masses of colouring to do. I'm working on colouring the next digital release. Um, I need to start colouring up some images ready to start making um, demos for November. And I also need to be colouring up um, and digitising the February physical release because yeah, yeah, you actually have to do it that early because I need to get everything sort of ordered and stuff. So yeah, lots on my list to do today. But yeah, I'm kind of trying to concentrate on getting bulk of videos done so I'm just going to heat my glue gun up okay, so I'm using up the remainder, I don't have much of this gel medium left so I'm going to be using up this one um, but 
then I have a nice new tub of the Pretty Gates Gritty Gel Medium that I will be moving on to. So the reason I'm doing this, it's a bit like when we use um, like foam and wet glue. Um, the foam will give you the immediate adhesion, but the, the wet glue gives you the permanent adhesion. Now, I don't want this to fall apart, but I want to be able to move on to the next stage. So that hot glue will stick immediately and adhere immediately, and that will give me the ability to continue. Um, but hot glue dries very brittle. There's no movement in it, whereas gel medium is designed to dry with an element of flexibility to it. Um, and because of that, it withstands um, time and movement and stuff like that, and it's not going to sort of snap off. Um, whereas your glue, your hot glue, will at some point. So you know, I'm deliberately putting more gel medium than I am hot glue, but um, we're just getting that stuck down. Had an extra bit to that, is it there? Yeah, I think it was. So we're just going to do that and then I am going to, I think I'm going to go white gesso this time. I want to do another steampunk hat but with white gesso. And I can't decide whether to do it as another YouTube video or whether to do it as a live. I'm not sure. I'm kind of tempted to do it as a live to be honest because I feel like I've done two steampunk hats on here. And it might be quite nice. But we will see. Right. Do the same over here. It's great. I can start being a bit more generous with my gel medium. I was getting a bit tight with myself because I had this tiny little bit left. But I also knew that I was getting some from Lynette. Basically, um, when I went to meet her in Angel, I'd given her a massive shopping list. <laughs> it's like, I know you're busy organising a show and... Um, you know, doing samples, but here's my shopping list. <laughs> Get your priorities straight, you know, look after me. <laughs> Such a nice person. I really am. <laughs> uh, dear, you got to laugh. Actually, we had a lovely time. We went out for a meal. We were very well behaved. So we went out for a meal. Um, and I had a cocktail. One cocktail and um, Lynette had one gin. We were very restrained. Lynette did have an early morning show the next day, so that would be why we behaved ourselves. kind of want to tornado both sides of that night, so I'm just going to make a quick alteration. I just think that when it comes to the colouring stage, that that um, line is going to bother me somewhat. So I'm not quite sure what Dawn means by embellishments. <laughs> don't quite know what I'm doing with that. Um, actually, I think I'll bring it in further. I quite like that. It's different to the other one, but that's okay. Right, so let's get that on. And then I'm going to have a little route through my bit box because I've seen some things that I want to use and I can't decide whether, which I'm going to decide this in a minute once I've got the bits out of my bit box, whether I kind of want to put the flowers on after the fact or whether I sort out, ow, 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 don't put your finger in hot glue. Um, listen, it's hot and it sticks like glue. <laughs> yeah, I can't decide whether I want to gesso over my flowers or not. So, but to do that, I need to sort of get a bit of a rough guesstimate of the direction in which I am heading. So um, I'm just going to pull all my bits and pieces together and then we can have a little look at that. Okay, so these are the elements I have pulled from my bit box and they're just quite soft and pretty and I quite fancy using some of those. I quite like that one. Um, hedgehog's quite Oh, look at all the little hedgehog. I like the little hedgehog. That or the raccoon. Oh, I think she's cute too. Decisions, decisions. Yeah, I like the I like the balloon. Um, I'm trying to work out what goes. Oh, actually, I'm going to stick with that one because that's got balloons. So it's kind of like 
it follows a similar theme. So, oh, here are some flowers that I have in my stash. And as I said, now I'm going to decide whether I want to put them on at this point and gesso or whether I want to add. Or maybe I might just do both. <laughs> like a big spider. <laughs> what have we got? See, I'm just... I just don't know. I've also got to make embellishments from... Um, see, the other thing is I could just kind of keep it very rustic looking, in which case these little images might not work as well. But then I know Dawn's used her bit box now. Uh, right, I'm going to rummage through a bit better and yeah. Okay, so I have decided I'm just going to go with the flowers. I'm not going to worry about those extra elements yet. I've got other things in my bit box if it doesn't work by the end. I don't actually really own ribbon or string, um, but I'm reckoning I can get away with this because it's pretty much the same thing. Um, it's fibres and I've had them forever because it was like, oh wow, they're really cool. And then I have never ever used them. Look at them, they're all tangled. All right, is it because they're individual bits? Let's see, I've never even used these. Yeah, right, so I think what I'm going to have to do is take them all off the card. Yeah, so I've never used these because they were, were like a fashion a while ago. And it, as I say, I'm not a ribbon or a string or a sort of person. It's not something that I use overly much. And seeing as I don't have string and I don't particularly want to use rib ribbon, I think this sort of constitutes to be similar. So I'm going to pull out one of these and I'll use one on each one. And what I'm going to do she says it's quite a mission well, actually I might just need one I'll have one on both I'll go for this one it's the most string looking one that I've got so let's cut this in half and it's good because it's getting stuff used I think this is the idea that Dawn had showing that you know you don't need all the fancy stuff to make something pretty you can just use stuff that is in your stash and to be honest most of us have boxes lying around um, flowers a lot of us have um, but I think the idea was also to make stuff out of the cardboard which I have still to do but I will work that out in a bit so what I'm going to do is grab a piece of this fibre and I'm just going to stick it down like so and then I'm actually just going to put the flowers on as I was half thinking earlier and then we'll cover it all with gesso and then see how we get on because I do have other things in my bit box that are smaller and we can flip through it and make it work. So I'm going to put a big glob of the gel medium and just give it a little bit of the glue and just to assist it. And then as I stick these flowers down it should naturally adhere um, it should naturally adhere that fibre down anyway. So let's grab a bit more of this and a bit of this. Rinse and repeat, as our Charmaine would say. Rinse and repeat. Right, so pop that in there. And these are quite cool because I like these, and but they're quite big and bulky, so I always end up getting being put off putting them on a project. So it's good that they're getting getting used. And then I'm gonna put a little that little flower in there. So again, I just need to grab some gel medium and put that on. And a little bit of this and a little bit of that. <laughs> singing and that's very worrying. Right, there we go. Okay, there we go. Right, that is that. Do a 
want another little one at the top. Let's have a little look. Well, actually, two at the top could be quite nice. These are the sort of things that sit in my stash forever because, to be honest, I very rarely use flowers on projects. Not big ones like this. Like, I, 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 I tend to find things like this end up too bulky and too high for my liking. Oh, I like that there. Right, okay. So, I'm going to just as a sale. So my original idea with these little characters probably isn't going to work now. But that happens when we create. You know, we start off with a direction. And I think the main thing with creating is just to get started. Right, where's my string? The other half of... Oh, I'm calling it a string. It's the closest I have to string. And this is the thing. It is the closest I have to string. So, as I said, I'm pretty sure Dawn's idea with this was just to sort of get us using what we have because she's brilliant at this. She likes to just, you know, use supplies that are about, show that you don't need lots of fancy kits and this and that and the other to make beautiful things. You can just go with the flow, go with what you have. Um, and so that's the thing. I don't actually have string, but what do I have? I have these fibres, but it could be thread, it could be wool, it could... Whatever you've got knocking about the house that you could use, then go with that, you know? Right, I am quite liking that as that looks now, so I'm going to stick that down before I end up faffing too long. I may go for a similar layout and see what I've got to put it, because we're kind of going to seem a bit different with these elements. So let's pop that down. And a little bit of this one. Okay. Like so. And let's do the same here. And I will clear up my desk and we will come back and do some JSON. Quite liking this to be honest when Don first mentioned it I was a bit like oh as I said and then you kind of get that you get your head around it a little bit um, and then you start creating and then as soon as you I think as soon as we start creating we end up in our happy place don't we it's like oh yeah this is fun I'm just faff it and do you know what if it turns out great then wonderful if it turns out rubbish then we've still enjoyed the process I did a live last night and it was a complete disaster quite frankly. <laughs> it was dire. And yeah, it was just going from bad to worse, from bad to worse. Um, but do you know what? I had a giggle with the people that were watching and we had fun. So that all turned out okay. Actually, I'm wondering where they are. I've got little diddy ones. I might put a little... Sorry if that's causing a rustling in the camera that's not pleasant. And I've just realised that I have made a mistake. So let's see what has happened there. I just realised I've not plugged in the wire, so we'll see if any sound has picked up whatsoever. And if not, we will be having some fancy edits. Right. Oh, one of those days, weeks. I'm going to keep that. Do I want to... I might put two mini ones up there just so it sort of mirrors that one. And as I said, I'm going to hope that at least the sound has picked up a little bit. So if the sound's been a bit dodgy until now, it should improve. Um, <laughs> if not, you could be watching the first bit on speed up. Mm. 
No, actually I don't like that. Um, that's too heavy. What about this? It's weird because the first time, normally if I forgot to stick the wire thing in, then it would still pick up some sound. It would be a bit echoey and not as clear as it should be. But the last time I did this, I ended up with absolutely nothing. So I'm just a bit concerned now. We'll see. Stop for my lunch and find out what is going on. Right, there we go. So, that's me for the minute. I'll tidy up and then we will just so. Okay, so I stopped for lunch. I checked the video and it sort of, yeah, thankfully it's recorded with sound. Sorry that the sound's not great for the first half of the video, but hopefully we're a lot better now. I did have a panic though because I went and <laughs> to do it and the video bits didn't show up on the SD card it was so bizarre and I'm looking at it and panicking and then about 10 minutes later it decided to load up now I have to say <laughs> actually really liking these as they are now and I'm a bit loath to cover the entire thing in gesso um, I was going to try and sort of use up the end of this um, 13 art stuff but I think it might be We'll see. Yeah, I'm a bit loath to cover it up because I'm actually really liking it. So I'm thinking I'm kind of almost going to dry brush it now and then put colour on because I don't actually really want... I like, I'm like. i liking the look of the cardboard <laughs> and I'm liking the look of the hessian with it. Um, so I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to just... I might have to give in and get a different... I do have another gesso. I have to say, I am sat... Oh. Well, that's come off, that's fine. I can stick that back on later. Um, I am so fortunate because I love 13 Arts Gesso. And do you know what? I've not bought myself one pot yet. The lovely Dawn keeps, every time she orders some, she orders me one as well. Isn't she the sweetest? It's so nice. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to get another. Actually, I've got, yeah. I'm going to open another one because we're just going to be wrestling with that for no apparent reason. I maybe have to scrape up what's left in there and use it as texture paste or something like that. But I will get my nice new one and we will go with that. And as I said, I'm, I'm really liking the natural look. Oh, look at that. It's just lovely. Just, oh, that's just a love. I love 13 Arch Gesso. Look how thick that is. Fabulous stuff. Right. Um, okay, so... As I said, I am going to mostly just dry brush and I'm not going to cover all of it. I might do it a bit heavier there because I've got that sort of, um, there's like a, a number in the cardboard, sort of packaging <laughs> number. As to the texture, so it's fine. So I'll maybe go heavier in that bit there just to sort of cover that, but I'm not actually going to cover all of it. I'm just going to cover areas. So now that I've done that to make it look right, I'm going to have to sort of go that heavy coming down to sort of draw the eye in. I'm going to use the gesso just to hold that string down a bit better. Yeah, I like that. So we've got a bit of heavier, heavier stuff just drawing the eye down. So that's quite good. And yet I'm maintaining that... Um, the natural looks. So I'm going to do a bit more dry brushing on the flowers just to sort of unify the colours a little bit. Although we are going to be, acrylic paint is on the list as well, so we are going to be adding a little bit of acrylic paint. And as I said, I'm just going to knock because this is quite yellow. Um, so we'll knock the flowers back a little bit as well. And then I think I'm going to actually go for really, really delicate colours when it comes to painting it, which is not like me at all. <laughs> I don't normally do subtle. Okay. 
I'm liking. I have no idea what I'm going to do for embellishments. <laughs> I'm going to turn a cardboard box into embellishments because that's kind of on the brief. Right, again, I'm um, just going to dry a brush over these flowers, but I'm actually really, really liking that natural hessian look that we've got going on. So I'm not going to cover it too much. I am going to maybe add a bit more white round about the focal elements and um, purely that I kind of want it to marry with this one so that we've got a bit of white and a bit of knot if that makes sense um, and partly to hold the string down or fibre because I didn't quite have string in my stash but yeah so I'm just sort of almost stippling it onto the flowers because that seems to be the easiest way of getting a bit of gesso on there and then I'm going to brush it onto the side. It just means we can, it's just sticking, giving another element for this string to actually stick down. There, I'll just there we go. So yeah, I'm quite liking that. And again, I just dry brush a bit over here. So I'm just going to go and choose myself some acrylic paints. I think I'm going to use my craft box UK ones actually, because I've got some nice subtle goldy tones, which I think will work really well with how the project is going so far. And yeah, we will have a play with those. So I've got this one here. Um, fortunately, she sort of sells them in sets. Um, this is when I went to the craft box. Um, so I don't know the individual colours, but I think it was like a rose gold set that um, I had. But look, that's just really similar colours to this. Um, but it's going to have that mica in that sheen. And although I'm having to like really shake this to move the mica, it is still an acrylic paint. Um, so yeah it's just that it's a very very thin acrylic paint so she designed it you know because obviously she uses a lot of snip arts and chipboards and stuff like that um, and they, they can be really delicate so to paint them sometimes with acrylic paint um, it clogs up the holes and um, lots of different things so she was like I wonder if I could create an acrylic paint that's really thin and then that's how these luminous lumi paints were designed and born but it is, I've, it's been a long time since I've used them so I'm really struggling <laughs> to get that mica stirred up so I'm just going to, um, yeah, go off camera and try and give these a really, really good shake. I'm just going to come back on camera because you heard me shaking that. Can you hear that? I've probably been shaking for a good three or four minutes and only now can I hear that ball. So these paints do have that ball in to help to activate so it's like if I've not quite got it here. Can you hear? That, I'm just heating the liquid to go up and down now. That ball is just coming. So if you do have them and they have this sort of ball bearing in them, you do need to sort of keep keep shaking until you can hear that ball moving and then you really know that you're getting the mica um, mixed in. So that was just a sort of little extra tip so I thought I would come there. <laughs> come on and show you that like this. This one still needs a bit more of a shake so I will just keep going with that. I'm just going to pour a little bit of paint into the lid. Um, Anna recommends that you use your paint in a paint palette but what I was finding was I was ending up using far more you know but to pour it out. I'll explain why in a minute. Hang on let me just get my full sentences. Yeah I would pour it out and then the reason she says it is because you kind of need to keep stirring to keep that mica going but if I was pouring it all in a separate paint palette I would never use as much as I needed for a project and it was difficult to pour back in because you had multiple paints in the paint palette so I do it this way but you do need to make sure when you pour it after you pour it back in you wash your lid because you will end up with caked bits just there because I obviously didn't clean that properly there so we've got little caked bits but we can just pull those off so like I've pulled them off there and then they would just become like nice pretty little shards and things that we can add. Right, I'm going to start off, oh, look at that. I'm going to start off by adding some of this around and about 
and I might just spray it with water as well to get a little bit um, of movement. So again, you need to sort of stir the paint. That's just this particular paint. As I said, I was fortunate enough last year to do a workshop, to do one of the Craft Box UK workshops, um, the retreat, and it was absolutely brilliant. Um, so, you know, I did get to spend a couple of days with Anna and then got to learn a bit more about the paints and, you know, her thought process behind them and how they work and tips and tricks. So, as I said, I got this directly from Anna herself um, to do it like that. That is just beautiful. I love the colour on that. Right, I'm just going to grab my water spray, which is just here. I'm going to just give that a little spray and we'll just have it because if we do this we can hopefully get it running um, you know, in between the lines of the card, give it a bit of movement. So, look at that. Just yummy. And again, because this is so heavily mica'd, it is one of those things that it's going to look so much better once it's dry. That is just delish. I am liking that a lot. Right, let's do the same on this one over here. Yeah, it's perfect because I was really liking how it was going. So we've managed to keep that those sort of really soft, neutral colours um, in keeping with the project. Um, but now we've got a little bit of bling and sheen, which is just awesome. And I think I'm actually just going to stick to this um, gold colour. No, it's okay because we can pour that back in and also um, I'm thinking we might be able to use it to do the embellishment side. I'm just going to tuck some down these the lines here almost like the shadowing effect. So we'll see the various different textures. We'll add that there. Scrummy, yummy, yummy. I love this. Okay. I put some, those flowers were quite yellow. So I'm putting quite a bit of this in because it'll tone better with that. Okay, now well, let's get some water on this again. Just help. I like the water because you lose control over the project a little bit. Um, it kind of will start to do its own thing, but that's when you get a much looser, more natural product on it. And as I said, these loomies are quite runny anyway. Okay. Fab. I like that a lot. I'm just going to add, because it's ran into it and absorbed into the petals there, because obviously it's different to that. and it's run off the gesso a bit and I think on this occasion I kind of want to make that flower look a bit more uniform. I'm just going to come in and add a little bit of extra to that. So what I would do now is we would pour this all back in here so that we've not wasted it and get as much as I possibly can back into the pot. But I do, like obviously I am going to have to spill out my lid but I have found that I've wasted far less doing it this way than popping it into the paint palette because I just I never managed to get things quite as I wanted them. Right so I'll pop that aside and I'll wash that lid in a minute and pop that back. Now I'm thinking I'm going to grab another piece of this cardboard because oh sorry about that that's my microphone wire just managed to knock it and it's Sorry, checking the right. So I'm just going to grab this and then I'm going to leave that over there to dry. Okay. I'm going to grab this um, gesso again and the one that I was gessoing with, and I'm going to put a nice coat of gesso on this here and I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is dry this and paint the loomies over it. I'm going to take the last little remaining bit 
of this and I'm just going to paint that on like so. I really have sort of used up all the bits that were in there. As I said, I will have to just give that a little rinse because it will affect the way it screws onto the bottle. But that's just the way I've found it easiest to do it. Um, because there's nothing worse than seeing all the paint. I mean, I was actually peeling all the paint out of the thing to create little shards that I could use. Um, but I kind of want it more as paint <laughs> than anything else. It's ages since I've used these Lumis. And I was doing a live last night. And I pulled out one of my um, Nouveau. So look, I don't know if you can see the difference there. That looks like quite a dark pink. But then you stir it, and all of a sudden you can see the mica. And that's what Anna says. It's so heavily micaed that it just constantly needs stirring. So even as you're using it, you need to be stirring it. Right, so I'm just going to take that, and we are going to paint this half that pink. And I'm not quite sure what but I'm planning on whatever this, whatever I turn this into, to be the little embellishment. So hopefully this will be like my little sequins or pearl drops or something like that that um, I would normally put down. But I'll do it like this instead. Okay, so that's that painted. And again, so hopefully we'll be able to see this a bit easier with this because I've got quite a lot left. Now if I poured that out, because I, I had planned on using it, it would have all been wasted. Now we can pour that back in quite easily, and as I said, we're just I'm just going to keep going, I'm sort of running the brush to the side like that. But I've pretty much got all of that out now. Pretty much everything that I poured out is back in there because you can really get your brush round to the crevices to get it all out. And as I said, quick rinse. But if that had been in a palette with the blue and the green and the gold, there's no way I could have poured them all out individually. And got them back in my pot. Um, so that's why. See, I've got that pretty clear. I've not wasted much at all. So I have found it that that's the best way forward for me. Right, so I'm going to clean that. I'm going to let all of that dry. I think I'm going to let it dry naturally, especially the cardboard because it's gone quite dark again because it was soaked with water. Um, so I'm going to let it do its thing and then we'll be back to sort of decorate and finish off. I realise I'm talking to you and it's all off screen. Look, there we go. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so that's that all dry. So now for adding something from my bit box. So I had pulled out these earlier. Um, I don't think the original ones that I'd pulled out well, maybe are going to work. But we'll see. Um, I'm kind of thinking that maybe the birds might work. We've got a couple of birds. I think they might work a little bit better. So I've got two. So I don't know whether these these might work slightly better. And the other thing that we were to use, I'm just faffing now. Um, the other thing that we were to use was um, one of the GMC sentiments. Now the bag that I had I've got some in here. This is I have two bit boxes. I have a GMC one <laughs> so that when I'm working on my stuff um, I've got it ready uh, and I have my other bit box. So I'm not going to pull out stuff from here because um, I sort of think but it's a slightly different thing but um, we were to be using these word things so that's sort of the end of a packet has gone in there for me. Right, so I'll pull those out and this is my actual bit box. So I'm just going to have a little look, see and see what we have. Um, oh, got a bit of lace. That could be quite pretty. Mm. I quite like working from a bit box. Actually, I could maybe chop that up. And where's my scissors gone? Do you know what has happened? That's, my husband says to me this morning, um, when we woke up, he goes, oh, I've been organised in your craft space. And it's like, oh, he likes to reorganise things, which is fantastic. I'm so sorry. But honestly, he can, I can never find anything after he's decided to have a rearrange. It suits his head 
and she'd know well enough to leave alone. My daughter's the same. She's like, well, I used to know where it lived, but now I don't. Right, so we could tuck some bits of lace in here. Well, to be honest, ribbon was on the list, ribbon and string, but it was in my bit box, you saw. It was in my bit box, so I think we're fair game. That's the thing, I have random stuff in my bit. Basically, my bit boxes, I can't be bothered tidying away. <laughs> I do a project and think, oh, you know, I can't be bothered opening up the lace box and the bead box and the this box and the that box, so I just shove it up. But I, I do try and make sure that I work regularly from my bit box so that it doesn't get too full. Um, so I do try and do that. But yeah, so I can find all sorts of things, all sorts of goodies in here. Never know what I'm going to get. That's quite good, but I'm going to need this in threes. So this one is going to have to, that's fine on it as one, but I'm going to have to split this into two individual parts because it's going to bother me the fact it's not in a three. So we can maybe put one there. Well, that was a fortuitous find. And we could put that up there. Now... And the one thing I am contemplating is I don't think there was Distress Inks on the list and these are going to look too white so I might have to pull out the same paint that we had and paint over them. Oh, I was supposed to make embellishments, wasn't I? I don't think I even have a punch next to me. Right, okay. That means we have to make something out of this. Those were the things that I'd... Hmm. Unless... Could we mount... I might be cheating. Well, the thing is, I had started this well in advance and now it's half past two and the video's due up at six. So, you know, oh, I like those, but I'm supposed to use those. Mmm. Okay. Sorry, should that you actually see me rummaging? Oh, good. I was hoping there might be a gem at the bottom of here because we need a gem for there. So that's all good. Um, what have I got? I've got a mushroom. Some of Emma's Emma bugs. These are all a bit bright, I think. Mind you, a pop of colour might be quite nice. Hmm. Love hearts. Oh, look. I've got a bit of this. A bit of washy. A bit of wishy washy. Actually, Dawn gave me this washy as well, so that might be quite. I quite like this one. I quite like that, like that. And then big. That could maybe work. Do we need a bit of washy as well? I'll just stick a bit down, see what I think. Let's see. We had a little bit of... Yeah, I know. Yeah. Why not? I like this. This is just like random, random bits. <laughs> that you couldn't possibly plan for. Right, let's should we stick a bit up here as well. Or is that too much? Oh no, I quite like it. I need a, a little thin piece as well though, just to tuck into so it goes along the edge there. There we go. Okay. I like that. Should we pop a bit of this washi onto this side as well? Right. What have we got here? We could maybe have a little bit going down by the side of those roses. So let's just tear that. I could have some coming like this. Down here. That could look quite nice. And then we could maybe have another bit and down in this corner. Actually, if I maybe put it, I'll put it under the lace. I'll have to glue that lace down. Right. So trouble is, I think my crocodile's up in the loft still, so I'm trying to work out what I've got down here that I can turn this into an embellishment. I don't know if it'll go through my punch. Can the cardboard go through this? Nope. Oh, hang on. Oh, it might, you know. Nope. Okay, right, I'll stop faffing. I'm just going to have to hand cut this. And what I'm going to do is just cut some little squares. And that will be our 
embellishments. As I said, all I was planning on doing was doing little um, circles, but we'll do squares instead. So like a little mosaic maybe. So let's chop a load of those down. So yeah, I'll, well, I'll come back once I've chopped a load of those down. Do, 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 do. A bit random, but there you go. So I think I am going to stick this birdie down. I'm happy with this one. Let's just get some of those pips off. And we can stick her down because I think she is, she looks good on that one. I'm happy with that. Let me see, just to see if I've got some baby foam. As I said, I have no idea where anything is because my husband's decided to rearrange me in a method that suits him. But it now means that I'm looking around to where I think something should be and it no longer lives there. That's what happens. I went to bed early last night because I was tired. That's because I'd stayed up far too late the night before watching um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Sort of. <laughs> oh, I need a new glue. If I get a chance, if I get this video edited in time, I might see if I can talk my daughter into a trip up to Hobbycraft. And get myself some new glue and a new black pen. Right, so we can stick that there. Okay. And this one I think is quite nice, but it's a bit too big, so I'm going to be a bit brutal and chop some of it off. And then, oh, see, and now it just tucks in behind there. So that's the other thing. Never be afraid to make something work for you. You know, it's like I knew it looked quite nice, but it wasn't quite right, and it's just because it was too big. Whereas by chopping its belly off, I've managed to um, get it so that I can slide it and behind those flowers. There we go. Right, so we're getting there. Let's get these sentiments sorted. So um, I don't like the whiteness of them. So what I'm gonna do is, let's see, what do we want? I like dream big. I need to stick that down as well. So we can get on that now. Quite like, oops. Should we go for my world? My world, they're quite nice. And then dream big, but I think with this dream big, we'll have to make it a bit smaller. And then we'll turn it into a bit of a banner. But I'm also going to just have to pop some paint on that because it's just going to bother me. So, yeah, we can have dream big going there. And then we'll do the same with my world, chop it down. So again, these came in a pack, but you can chop it down to suit you. Okay. Like so. Perfect. I like so. Just, I have given this a little shake just before I pressed play on the video again. brush. Um, I don't want this. That's not a very good brush, is it? Look at that. It's very, it's like, it's like a toothbrush that's been brushed too hard. <laughs> so I'm just going to paint over this. Thankfully I'm not needing it for anything overly complicated. So we can still, we can still read it there and it just means it'll tie in a little bit better just read it but I can't think of what else to do because I don't think there was inks on the list I think it was acrylic paints I mean I'm, that's what I'm remembering um, I could be wrong but we will see okay this brush is terrible this is going straight in the bin or I might actually just stick it in gel medium pull it together and then we can make a we can make a project with a there we go, with a brush, <laughs> mixed media project with a brush. Okay, so I'll get a bit of 3D foam on this one as well. And then my very, you know, artistically thought out 
mosaic tiles because that's all I can think of for turning the packaging into embellishment. I bet Dawn's done some really cool things and I'm going to watch it and go, oh. We do that all the time. It's like Dawn did her, the last one, the steampunk hat. So she did it and then to me, the way she did it made it look like Mary Poppins. Now I have to, now I want to make it again because I want to make a Mary Poppins version and also when I was doing mine, I, um, wished that I'd sort of done it with white gesso instead of black gesso because um, it just turned out very similar to one that I'd done previously so I want to do it again so that's the thing I end up watching Dawn's videos and going oh, I like mine but I really like hers and then I want to like just steal all her ideas quite frankly which I will because I quite frequently steal her ideas Dawn and I were talking about this we do quite frequently steal each other ideas but that's okay you're allowed to be inspired by each other but do you know what if you're inspired by somebody please give them the credit <laughs> see I will come on this video and I will say I have completely stolen this idea from Dawn and you know I, I think we can't help but be inspired by others in this industry we can't help but make stuff similar to other people um, and stuff like that because we're playing with products we're, we're using similar techniques it's going to happen and I don't think we can be overly precious about it but at the same time if we know that we have borrowed or taken an idea um, even if we've asked the person do you know what sometimes we've even asked the person and then said oh do you know what? I was really inspired by this do you mind if I you know make something like this like yours um, and they say yes I do think the courtesy of giving them the credit, you know, that's, that's, I think that's fair enough. So I will, quite frankly, steal Dawn's ideas because I know I will, because I'll make something, she'll make something and it'll be blimmin' brilliant and I'll regret that I hadn't thought of that myself. I'll be like, oh, why didn't I think of that? And then I'll steal her idea. But I will come on here and tell you that I stole her idea. So I think that's my little rant for today. <laughs> I didn't mean it to sound like a rant. So if it came across like that, I am incredibly sorry. But um, yeah, I think we just can't help. But there's a lot of discussion on this on uh, uh, the, in this industry, though. What is being inspired by and what is just lifting someone's work completely? Um, and I think it's... To be honest, we would not put ourselves... Do you know what I mean? I And I know Dawn's the same. Dawn deliberately has a channel because she wants people to be inspired. She wants people to go away and think, oh, do you know, now I want to create. And we're all like that. It's the biggest compliment in the world if someone watches something that we have done or sees something that we've done and wants to recreate it. That is the biggest compliment. That is why we are here. You know? But I still think it's a kindness to... Um, give credit where credit is due. So I am going to give credit where credit is due and say Dawn is amazing. She's incredibly talented. She makes wonderful stuff. I watch her videos regularly and she regularly inspires me and I regularly borrow her ideas. I also regularly wind her up but you know I keep telling her that's a sign of affection. <laughs> She'll be winding me up in her videos as well so it's all good. It's all good. She was. Do you know that Dawn does lives now on Facebook? She's done a few lives, and me and her daughter Kate were just winding it up. It was quite funny. We had, we thoroughly entertained ourselves, and we sat drinking on the naughty step. We both got sent to the naughty step, um, but we just shared a cocktail. Do you know I'm that I'm there that regular now that I've invested in palatial cushions and all sorts for the naughty step, so I'm quite comfortable there. Right, I am now just waffling for Britain. Can we tell? Right, so now I've got my random little mosaic tile style -y things. Um, I want some gold splashes, um, but obviously we're having to use acrylic paint, so I'm pretty sure I have this same paint but in a stronger gold. So I'm just going to go and have a look. Okay, so I have this one here, which again is of, it's of a rosy goldy sort of tone, um, but... Um, it's a bit darker because oh look at that that's just a bit delicious isn't it right so I've given it a good shake and because I'm only using it for splashes I'm not going to bother pouring it out but let's get some of this all loveliness all oh that was a big splatter 
so let's just splatter that everywhere just for the finishing touch I'm gonna have fun cleaning this up it's everywhere do you know what um I I ended up with like the Dina Wakely gloss sprays on my iPad. I actually had to get the isopropyl out to clean my screen. <laughs> so do just be careful. Oh, I kind of wanted some big chunky bits now, but I've ended up with big chunky bits on my desk, but not on my project. Right, put them to the side because cleverly my tub of water is in the bathroom and not on my desk. Right, I let's just take this off. I will give my Actually, do we need to get my desk a bit of a clean? I think it's zoomed in that far that you can't overly see it. So those are my two tags there using the brief that Dawn gave me. Oops, trying to straighten them up. So, anyway, I hope you have enjoyed it here. If you have, please do consider liking and subscribing. And of course, the most important thing, please do pop over and see our lovely Dawn and see what she has done with her cardboard box. Okay, and I will see you again very, very soon. Okay, take care then, and goodbye.